Hi, I'm Danielle Hartman, and welcome to Port & PA, the series exploring Pennsylvania's craft beer industry. Pittsburgh's Barrel & Flow Fest is a welcoming arts and beer festival that celebrates and showcases the black community. This festival started out as Fresh Fest in 2018. Our team caught up with a few of the breweries involved in the 2021 festival. Well, right now we're at Barrel and Flow Fest. This is our very, very, very first time pouring our beer on tap right now. Um, it's, it's, uh, can I cuss? Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking dope. It's fucking amazing. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I mean, this reunion of black breweries and our fellow white bearded guys. <laughs> We're in the Southside Works for the Barrel and Flow Festival in Pittsburgh. Summertime. That's when you play all your games and you want to be chased by other times. We're Old Bender Brewing. Uh, we're in Blonox uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We have a production brewery and tap room located right along Freeport Road. We're three guys that just love doing great beers, great styles, very traditional styles, and we love doing events like this that really uh, shed some light on th some things that need to be. We did a collaboration with our friend Jordan, mm -hmm. who is uh, goes by Live From The City. Live From The City, L-I-V-E-F-R-O-M-T-H-E-C-I-T-Y, one word, no spaces. Yeah, yeah, hey. <laughs> is it summer yet? Hey. So I am a music artist, rapper, songwriter, producer, and I work with Driving Wild Black Records. I want you right now, just to sum it up. I'm here today because I collaborated with Old Thunder Brewing Company, and uh, we were able to concoct a beer named after my album, A Summer to Remember. Um, so the beer flavor notes are inspired by my album, so I'm here today and I'm rolling with them. Dave Bracey, who is a co-founder of the festival, reached out to us and asked us if we'd be interested in linking up with uh, Jordan, live from the city, and it was a no-brainer. We met him, he came over, we, we've had numerous conversations about the beer and the style that we wanted to pursue, showed him what we've been working on, and uh, it's, it, was like a, it was a perfect match. We met up a couple times, uh, I tasted some of the things that they had on tap, we just kind of tried to center it around something that I was doing musically. Um, and around that time, I had actually dropped my album, A Summer to Remember. We tasted one beer that had kind of a tropical flavor. And we tasted a different beer that kind of had sort of a dank flavor. We just wanted to kind of combine those two things. So that was kind of how we came up with the flavor now. Him and his team came down and tried pretty much everything that we had available. Yeah. He really liked False Kingdom. Uh, he really liked the beer called All These Demons. Yep. So we took some characteristics and the combination of hops from both of those beers, paired them together, kind of sized it down to make it more sessionable because um, we're outside, it's hot, you know. Um, so we decided on making this pale ale with those hop characteristics. I've always liked beer, but I'm, ne I'm never going to drink beer the same. I've worked with somebody who actually brews beer, so it's definitely elevated my taste in beer. It's maybe like more of a beer fan, but also just like a little more picky about the beers I drink now. Shout out to Old Thunder because they make great beer. I've tasted just about everything they make at this point, and um, you know, it's all fantastic, you know, but it's definitely ele ele elevated my taste buds in that, in that respect. We were excited to meet Jordan. His music's very, very good. We, we listen to the album all the time in the brew house. I think he's become like a beer connoisseur since we started this process. It's been really cool to see him try our stuff, uh, get his notes on it, and especially this beer. I mean, we're, we're all so stoked about it, you know? Right now we're starting a Mac Brewing Co. Uh, we are on the road of having our own brick and mortar location. So we're uh, just building it up one beer at a time, um, just getting beer to lips, getting, let, letting people know that we're around. Um, we are looking to be in Philadelphia, of course, and we're looking to be in West Philadelphia that. I started out um, at an age that I probably shouldn't admit, <laughs> but it was at a, a nano brewery. Uh, it was called Nodding Head in downtown Philly, and Monkey Knife Fight, that was, that was the beer. A lot of people, when I say Nodding Head and I tell them Monkey Knife, I say, I remember that one, yes. I'm so mad that they're not around anymore. In the state of Pennsylvania, I'll be one of three black-owned breweries. They're all here today. It's Mac Brewing Co., Harris Family, and two locals. Uh, Harris Family being in Harrisburg, two locals and myself are in Philadelphia. So the scene, of course, Philly, Philly, Pennsylvania period, just has a very uh, eclectic 
beer selection. So I just want to be able to bring, you know, bring my two cents, put it in a game. Um, I'm a high gravity head, so all my beers are pretty high gravity, but very, very smooth. Uh, scary. <laughs> Getting positive feedback. Uh, this is a dream come true. Well, we, we, we kind of changed the game when it came to the whole contract growing side. It's a lot of us that are established, but don't have a, a brick and mortar location. So the contract growing side has definitely opened up for us. Um, but the, the brick and mortar locations, that's what's going to change the game. Beer is supposed to be, it's supposed to always evolve. And I think by, by more blacks being involved and being in the brew houses, I think it's, it's beer is just is going to go up from here. We're at the Barrel and Flow Festival, which I'm so incredibly excited about. I was first here in Pittsburgh at the Fresh Fest, and this has really grown so wonderfully. We have more breweries, we have more diversity, a lot more brewers that look like me. But what I really love about this, especially at this time in our country, is the fact that we are coming together. All colors, all types of beers and flavors, we're coming together and collaborating, and I think collaborating is really the basis for people having an understanding about one another and coming together to do amazing stuff like this. So I'm excited. Today is 9-11. Uh, unfortunately, I started my company that year. I launched my company on June 19, 2001. We had this whole plan to go into Harlem, which we did, to go into Midtown and Lower Manhattan. And I could our plan completely changed. It was definitely a time kind of like the pandemic in a way. What's similar is the fact that as a business person and as a person, we had to kind of rethink, you know, how are we going to move forward? How are we going to find a way and how are we going to put that passion back into what we love in the midst of this tragedy? And that's what we've been dealing with through the pandemic. And as we reflect 20 years ago, that's what I was dealing with as an entrepreneur. How do you get back to business and so many people are gone. And I've been in North Carolina uh, working on a project there since 2018. We signed a lease for a tobacco warehouse, which we're now converting into a teaching brewery. The reason why I really am excited about that is because along with all the conversations we're having here today about diversity and doing collaborations, we also need a way for people to learn about brewing. We need to have more home brewing going on in our communities. We need to have ways for people to get into the brew house, and that involves brewing classes and, and training. So that brewery is really going to be set up to connect directly into the areas in the community that people don't want to go to. This is our 1946 lager with orange peel. This was a commemoration of black leaf tobacco workers in eastern North Carolina. Uh, that worked on the tobacco farms, our own tobacco farm. My father's parents had a tobacco farm in eastern North Carolina. So as a kid, my job with the tobacco was to pick all the green worms off of the leaves. They were like these beautiful neon worms. They were beautiful. So that was my job. And I remember those days. And in 1946, uh, those tobacco workers cast a vote that allowed them to get better work and better pay. And the tobacco warehouse we are in is the place where they actually cast that vote. So this is dedicated to them. It's a collaboration with Evergreen Brewery. When they came to visit me, I didn't even have to ask. They said, oh, that happened in 1946? Why not call it 1946 beer? We still do have a connection to Harlem. Uh, we're working on a project there. And this was an incredible break being here to get this inspiration and take that back uh, to Rocky Mount and Harlem and, and just, you know, keep, keep it brewing, keep it moving. The reason I've really enjoyed a Barrel and Flow Festival is because it expands not only what beer tastes like, but what beer looks like as far as like the brewers and different things like that. And I think uh, one of the problems that it really addresses is the lack of diversity in the beer industry. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of people who might not even associate a black face or black people with beer. So for now people to see that I've collaborated with Old Thunder and I was actually a part of the process, like I was there on brew day and everything else, you know, it kind of makes people rethink what the beer industry should look like and you know, who should actually be involved. So I really just like kind of like breaking that mold, you know what I mean?
the festival like this, I think it brings it brings awareness to just black brewers, um, but it also lets us know, because I know when I first started doing my research on it, I, I really felt like I was the only one out uh, of brewing, being being a black male. And it wasn't until I came to Fresh Fest, which turned to, uh, you know, a Barrel Flow, that I seen other black brewers, and just to see that I wasn't in the space alone. How do we open doors for more people of color to get into the craft brewing business? How do we open doors so that we can do that collaboratively? We have collaboration brewing going on. So yeah, we get in the brew house, we brew the beer, we make amazing beers, we can them, we keg them. But what happens behind the scenes that I really love is the fact that conversations happen. How can we share ideas and exchange ideas about how to make things better for getting your project off the ground? So those real conversations that are really, really incredibly helpful. Plans and registration are currently underway for this year's Barrel and Flow. That's all for right now. Until next time. Cheers.